to do good to them that despitefully misuse you? You can tell me that if someone strikes me on one cheek, that I got to turn the other cheek? To pay my life, I got to lose. It is better. In this shit carefully I'm feeling like nobody cares for me All of my closest peers deceased I witnessed mama shed tears from grief I ain't been able to smile in weeks I'm feeling weak God should call his child asleep And let my body rest for once Let my soul be free Pray for forgiveness This suicide mindset is a sickness And it prayer works That'd be my only good prescription Cause I need it Been trying to walk with Jesus With these legs of a paraplegic Fall from the bottom to sleep as an adult, how do you consciously want to stay ignorant for the rest of your life? Okay, if you've been lied to, and somebody comes and tells you the truth, how do you as an adult, a grown man, stay blinded? Blood and Crippin started in California. It was adopted or imported. That's a situation that's like, you know what I'm saying, real epidemic around the country right now. You know what I'm saying? You got a lot of... I'm from the East Coast. I'm from North. You know what I'm saying? Um, you got a lot of niggas on the East Coast claiming West, West Coast hoods, West Side hoods. Dudes in the East Coast originally ain't have gangs like Bloods and Crips. We had, you know, street gangs or whatever. We where it started, even though y'all outnumber, even though there's more of y'all out here, Homeland is where Homeland is. The East Coast Bloods, they like, they following, following something that we already done. Bloods is our shit. Y'all took our shit and blended it with elements from somewhere else. I say 19, since the 80s I'm going back and forth. My family is in Pittsburgh, they live in Jersey, Georgia, Miami, New York. Uh, I even get kicked out of school on the West Coast and was going to school on the East Coast and we slang a lot of time. Uh, I really officially put down the first set, was out in Little Rock, Arkansas. We slang a dope there and then we went to the Hill District of Pittsburgh. A homie of mine got killed from New York. And I was fucking with the Jamaican posse homies. And um, so a nigga named Ray Children, he a Crip nigga, from Pittsburgh, went to California, came back, pushing Kelly Park, you know. So Kelly Park, I'm from Elm Street, you know, we banging hard, that's bumping thing. So he had everybody wearing blue rags, I had everybody had red rags. So within a minute, it was suitable business. Bloods and Crips start importing and exporting in the different states through correctional facilities, through just family. With the dope trade, the dope game, people are mobile. You know what I'm saying? The logistics meaning from A to B, you move from one point to the next point. So while we're pushing that product, we're pushing the movement. You know, wherever we went, we was blooded up, we took over. Whether it's Allentown, Pennsylvania, Cleveland, Ohio, Columbus, Cincinnati, Baltimore, Newark, East Orange, Plainfield, Camden, Brooklyn, Queens, Rhode Island, Boston, Atlanta, Miami. In Miami, the homie comes out south side by a but they from the east. And I got, in, in Orlando, we got a lot of homies. Jacksonville, okay, Alabama, a lot of treetop homies down here who I fuck with. You know, we just push the whole line. What happens is, because dudes in LA are so into it that when they come to these other cities and they meet these dudes who want to get on, they say, you know, I'm going to teach them how to gangbang. So when you teach them how to gangbang, now you're teaching them about what gangs is your rivals, how to throw up, you know, you know, how to diss other hoods or whatever. And now you got it to where as though when these dudes is coming into these cities from LA or from wherever, now the dude that you taught how to gangbang is running around gangbanging and it causes a problem for you to even be there because now they running up and trying to tear up somebody's neighborhood because of something you taught them. It's kind of like a, a catch-22 on both coasts. The homies back home on the west coast is mad, or not really mad, or they not understanding what's going on because the homies that came out here to the east coast that put them up on game and gave them the green light didn't come back home and tell, and tell us what was going on or what they did out here on the east coast. So, it's kind of tricky. It's it's like a breach of commu it's like a breakdown in communications on both sides. OG Mac did what he did, and the homies did what they did. So it's kind of fucked up. Um, there's another OG Mac, the East Coast homie from UBN, and I could tell you my interactions with him. Um, 
about the 1993s, I say slash 94, when I was on the East Coast in New York, he started pushing the bloodline out there, and um, um, homies were coming at me and saying that um, OG Mac was saying that yo, y'all niggas can't rock on the East Coast, and I'm like, why not? Cause y'all from Cali, you know West Coast and stuff. And I said, wait a minute. We went to his house on 183rd and Davidson. Me and the homie, uh, Brazy K from Bounty Hunter, a K K Dog, the homie Capone from Bounty Hunters, uh, the homie uh, Puppet from uh, Mad Swan. I think it was 74, something. I don't remember. And uh, who else was there? It was uh, the homie uh, Panama Red from Inglewood Family, and um, a couple other homies, you know, claiming West Coast. So we rolled up on the block while the New York niggas was there, you know, chopping it up. You know, we strapped up, and I just laid down the wall. I said, look here, if, if West Coast niggas can't rock our hoods out here, y'all can't rock blood. Cause that's from the West Coast. After that, it was cool. We broke bread and everything. Then I found a nigga was trying to set me up to kill me. But the next day, he got arrested. So that's the, that's the story of OG Mac. OG Mac, you kind of fucked up, homie. I don't know you, but I, I'm out here on the East Coast looking at some of the shit you started, and you kind of fucked up. And there were two. There was you, and it was um, OG Mac drama, okay? So it was two Macs that was calling me at one time. You did talk to me, but real talk, homie, the conversation that we had that you went back to the hood and said was misinformation. That's real talk. Both coasts is at fault. OG Mac from being out here and doing what he's doing and the homies from being back at home and doing what they doing. So it's, you know, we gotta pretty much come to uh, some type of agreement or at least some type of understanding. So a lot of this will be resolved. You got a lot of cats, especially out here in this city right now, that's banging all these LA hoods, man. They ain't spoke to a nigga, they don't know nobody. They ain't even touched that turf, been to a hood day or nothing in that hood. So and losing their freedom for big homies and blocks that they ain't never seen or never will see. Certain homies that came from the West Coast to the East Coast and gave homies out here green light and then went back home and didn't say nothing. Where's the communication at? Now the homies out here on the East Coast is stuck with, we bloods, but what do we do now? Okay, the bloods on the East Coast that, that was given the green light, that was given a stain or their status, what do they do? They have to implement certain rules to accustom by their lifestyle for survival. You know, and it's, we can't be mad at that. My problem really be with the, you know what I'm saying, the, the niggas on the West, man, that, you know what I'm saying, be really talking shit about niggas out here on the East, though. Like, I'm, I'm from 135, though, right? You know what I'm saying? I'm from Jersey, though, right? I'm not from 135, you know what I'm saying? That's what I, that's what I claim, though, you know what I'm saying? But niggas like me done been out there to the turf. I done been in bombed and shit, right? But you got, you got niggas out on the west and shit, you know what I'm saying, throw rocks, you know what I'm saying, stones at niggas out here in the east 3,000 miles away for claiming hoods out there, right? Like, like that's a fucking sin or some shit, you know what I'm saying, niggas banging your hood, right? But the, the niggas that bring the shit out here, don't why I say nothing to them niggas. How about the niggas that's right in L.A. that come out here to the east coast, you know what I'm saying, start breeding niggas. You know what I'm saying, you can't fault the little 13 year old, 14, 15 year old little nigga who really don't know too much about nothing. You know what I'm saying? But he feeling this Damu thing, he feeling this red rag thing. So the niggas he meet, you know what I'm saying? These niggas claiming the LA hood or some shit. You can't fault that nigga because he a real nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, it don't matter what you claiming. I know real niggas from all type of hoods, homie. And that's fucked up because I feel like they sending a lot of these young niggas out here to die. Not really knowing why they dying. So I'm kind of, I kind of opposed to that. I don't think that uh, West Coast niggas should be putting East Coast niggas on their sets. and different things like that somebody say a prayer for me pray for me pray for me it's different the east coast homies have to apply gang apply west coast gang banging to east coast living and that includes their surrounding they hustles they get downs they defense everything that's derived on the east coast is blended with with the blood uh shit that's the difference is like that's like saying, what's the difference between a, a, a Gucci bag from the Gucci store and the Gucci bag from 28th Street? Like, the West Coast Bloods, they the, uh, they the authentic. They a, a 
That's official. That's the original. We the, we the originators. We don't ride the five back home. We don't talk in codes. We don't do the secret hand or the handshakes. We don't we don't do none of that in California. The, the real gangbangers, we don't do that, my nigga. The niggas that ride the five, that whole line is straight out of Chicago. And everybody know that. But for some apparent reason, even though now that niggas know that, they still refuse to fix it and make it right. That's why, that's why I, like I was just telling you earlier how, you, how they got 40-year-olds. Uh, Talking about they bloods just got put on. I'm like, <laughs> it's just funny. <laughs> it's not the same. To me, it's not the same at all. Now, it depends on what age limit that, that they start getting turned into the gang life. I mean, certain friends do certain things. Certain friends just, just go on vacation, go to YA or whatever, what have you. That's like normally around kids start being bad in elementary real spit. They being bad, you know, meeting that little bad kids elementary, but they normally don't get put on until like around junior high school. You know what I'm saying? Depending on where the school, the elementary school is, they'll run around and hear some other little kids saying blood or another little kid saying cuz, and you know, they'll pick up the lingo. Then depending on where they have to leave school and go home at, <laughs> if they live in the wrong neighborhood from what they go to school in, it kind of confuse them. So they're going to have to pick and choose where they want to be from. You know that make that probably make that that little kid have to turn to a rider at an early age because if he has school and all his friends are saying blood and he living in, in a crip neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? He gonna have to go through that gauntlet. That's at junior high school. I mean, elementary too. You pick it up elementary, but junior high school that's when you start getting tough. You can start playing basketball, getting athletic and shit, getting swole. You and your homies chilling. This nigga say the wrong word. You just swole this nigga out the crew. You sock this nigga up. Uh oh, guess who the man? And then your ego get to rolling. Get then it's man, it's a cycle. So like the age limit, it all it, it go it's it depends. You're not supposed to get put on in your twenties unless you early 20s but that's like pushing the limit if you get put on your mid 20s your 30s man you ain't nothing but pinocchio and it's niggas that's younger than you that's geppetto that means that you a puppet and they get to pull your strings ain't nothing you can do about it i got put on we had to, we had we had to walk that circle you already know <laughs> We had to get put on. Um, another question I, 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 I was asked, how do I feel about people in their older years, our twilight years, coming to me, hey man, I'm gonna be put down. I'm gonna get down with that movement. Um, it's flattering, it's cool, but if you're 30 years old and 40 years old and you wanna join the gang, I think you need to have a sit down with Dr. Phil. Real talk, you're a grown ass man. You know, I got down this as a kid, I was 12 or 13 years old. You know what I mean? Didn't know what I was doing, you know? But uh, a grown man, come on, you, you, you should be rooted already. And you know, look around, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be blood till I'm buried in mud, okay? I'm gonna be red until I'm dead. You know, to me it's Pyro Damu Suwu. If it ain't Pyro Damu, you might as well be doo doo. No offense, but that's how I feel. But with that being said, if you grown ass man come into this, you need some, you need, you need some mental therapy, real talk. Cause um, this ain't for everybody, and if you're growing, and you need this. You know something's wrong with you. We come, we come in this as kids. We come in because it's family. It's a, uh, it's a comedy. You know, it's it's, it's like being in the army. You bond like being playing sports. You bond with your, your fellow teammate. You know, your homie is, is your brother. It, he's your father. He's your confidence. Some might be your son or your daughter. You know what I mean? It's that type of family bonding that 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 we that we. That we bring to each other. But that's just kids, and we grow up with that. A grown person does not does not have relationships like that as a grown person. I don't care if you got to your job, to your church, to your synagogue, or your mosque, or to your affiliation with the the Masons, the Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts. If you don't have no type of affiliation with someone like that, something is wrong with you. And you come to me talking about you want to get put on? You must be a police man. All them niggas that's 40 years old just now gang banging. Some niggas is wax, man. Huh? For real, son, them niggas is wax. Son. Them niggas ain't talking about shit. Initiation, it ain't cutting nobody face. It ain't none of that bullshit that motherfuckers do in other parts of the country. When I got put on, I I had to knuckle up. I got my nose broke getting put on Avenue Power Road. We had to squab. We had to put in work, pay our dues the right way. It's like it's like it's a way of life. It ain't just like it's not a passing fad. It's not no 
we in and we out type of shit. Like it's some for life shit. And out here, it's, it's, it's not the same. It's not the same. A lot of set hopping and shit like that. Like shit that we wouldn't even go for it, out on the West Coast. You gotta get your ass whooped or you gotta knock some of the homies out in the process of getting put on the hood, my nigga. The same shit that I had to go through, the same shit that the homies had to go through before me, the same shit that, the, that they had to go through before them, it's a set way you get your ass whooped, you put in work. Or if you got mad squabbles, nigga, you handle your knuckle game, go put in work. Stay, you know, stay with the homies. The original shit, there's no new way of getting put on the hood. There's no real such thing as an honorary member unless you was born in it. Niggas think this shit just something to play with, like it's just an outfit you put on in the morning, you feel me? Like a bandana, just a pair of shoes to these niggas. A lot of these young cats think that when they get down with bloods, they turn into something. They, they become like this, like a superhuman. Like, oh, I'm from bloods, I'm about to go ride out. I'm about to go, oh, he fool, he fool. He ain't real, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, niggas turn into something when they become bloods. East Coast is more organized. Here on the West Coast, you got a set, you got about 50 million OGs. On the West on the East Coast, it's about maybe two or three shot calls. You make a call, it's done. It's more organization on the East Coast than on the West Coast. Other than that, on the West Coast, I can kill. Come here, homie. This is, this is my homie right here, V, from L, from Michigan, too. He's out here, out here in AZ, he's a homie. I can kill this man. It's not gonna happen to me. You know why? Because he's black. And we're on the West Coast. Don't give a fuck about niggas. Now, in New York, if I kill him, the homicide gonna discover the case, and I'm gonna get fined. They're gonna use a fortune agent. What the fuck is it? Forensics, yeah, forensics. Sorry, I said forensics. They can use forensics, and niggas will get cut. Real talk. But I hear they, that's not the case. All right, thank you, homie. Get back to what you're doing. Eat the peace. But really, basically, other than that, the difference ain't no difference. We all we bleed the same, we ride the same, we die the same. Real game, real rules. It's it's some real shit out here. It's real shit that the homies out here on the East Coast is doing. They getting real time. We allow the media to infiltrate and to create the divide and conquer on the bloods from the east coast toward the bloods on the west coast because of the fact that we allow media and law enforcement to create this stigma to say that who's real and who's false now i can say that some people were misled and some people were miseducated but i can't say there's a such thing as a fake blood i've read um things online and i've read you know um articles that law enforcement put out where they said that East Coast bloods were fake bloods and they were nothing like the bloods on the West Coast. I can't say that. that there's no such a thing if people are living and dying for it. Because there's no fake deaths. When we put those people in the ground, our people are dead. The media gonna be the media though. You already know that they gonna try to downplay any any type movement. That's what they did to Huey and all. You know how it go, man. They gonna try anything anything that we put together any movement any type of strength us as black people put together they're going to try to break it because they know we run the world for real, for real this is a real life situation it's dudes in these cities that's really out there banging and people is losing their life over gang banging ain't make the east coast man niggas been out here killing before gangs even touch the team i think the fake bloods is the new motherfuckers that's coming up under that that fad shit, that fad blood shit. If you coming up on it, been, been like in one trendy bloods, you're not a blood, homie. You're not, you're not Pyro, you're not Brim, you're not none of that shit. If you trendy, if you like, like that, come on, my nigga, we don't get down like that. We, we keep it old school. You know, we, we go by the G code. I feel like if you really say you a blood or whatever, you gotta make your pilgrimage and come to the West Coast and see how they put it down in the West Coast. And I bet you a lot of these young boys out here change their whole outlook. And, they, they gonna want to start doing the right thing, going to church or something. They ain't gonna want no parts of this shit for real. Personally, man, like I feel like with this Damu thing, you know what I'm saying? There really ain't no boundaries to it. You know what I'm saying? It's not confined to nobody hood, nobody county or state. You know what I'm saying? This shit is like a national thing, right? So, with that being said, like you gonna have homies claiming like since this Damu thing did start in LA, you are gonna have niggas around the country claiming some of those hoods that ain't never been in, right? But this is my thing though, right? You know what I'm saying? If you out here, especially in North though, like, you know what I'm saying? You claiming these LA hoods. Shit, I feel like, you know what I'm saying? At some point, man, you supposed to make it your business, you know what I'm saying, to touch that turf though. I can't say it's the right way to gang bang. I would say just do your own thing. Like, for real. I can't say it's no right way. You know, niggas live, niggas die. Some of us get luckier than others. 
I'm getting reports that it's East Coast sense that's like, like really like, got the green light on homies on the East Coast that's banging West Coast sense under West Coast rules. They still, they still East Coast niggas, but they want to get their gang banging right. Me growing up in the game, you know, being on the East Coast, knowing dudes from LA, I would just say, put a stop to all of it. Like, whatever is in LA, however they do it in LA, leave it like that. If you got niggas in another city, another state, you know what I'm saying, pushing the line instead of trying to kick down on them niggas, they gonna push the line anyway. Y'all niggas ain't hopping on the planes, coming over here shutting shit down. So why not, you know what I'm saying, inform these niggas and teach these niggas the proper way, man. You know what I'm saying, help these niggas do something for their communities, their hoods and shit. When you get down to the bottom of it, from gang banging or ripping your hood, you're really killing your own people. The game chose us, like they say. Like all of the talk about, you know, dudes in LA, dude, or even dudes from LA sets are, uh, are banging against dudes from East Coast sets. Like it's, it's not facts. Like I come from an era, being from Bloods, where it wasn't even cool to claim a Los Angeles set. Like I've been in this mix ever since claiming a Los Angeles set made you fool. And I've been through that whole lifestyle. And he's been on the opposite end of the lifestyle, claiming an East Coast set, being on the opposing end, saying, well, Niggas claiming East Coast, niggas claiming West Coast sets that don't rock in New York, and New York we claim this, that, and the third. And even after all of that time has went by, we're able to sit here together as a unit and let y'all know that there is a greater message in this. It is a positive, a more positive message. It's not always about being enemies and who's at each other's throat. People walking around with bandanas on their face and screaming and yelling that's what the public and society's look at blood as some savages some animals and we people that 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 this is what we do this is our culture this is our way of life you feel me i can take it way back we tribal people in africa we was in tribes and it's funny to me because like if you're gonna do something you might as well start your own shit like don't don't emulate something and then add your own twist to it or emulate it and then uh really like try to Say a real nigga told you to do something that a real nigga ain't never told you to do. We gotta pretty much come to uh, some type of agreement or at least some type of understanding so a lot of this will be resolved. There's no way that you can get put on a gang from the internet. Gang banging, gang banging is not even on the streets anymore. On the internet, <laughs> nah. It's like you in it, you internet banging, you cussing out rival gang members on Facebook or, or on Twitter or on MySpace. If you still on MySpace, and you shouting out all of these sets and you whacking out all of these other sets, but the truth of the matter is, is that you do not have that hard thing to hit the streets and do anything of what you're talking about. We <laughs> gang banging on him. That's all these niggas could do now. These niggas was uh, what uh, what uh, Star and Buck Robbie call them mop, mouse pad mobsters. <laughs> you can be a killer on a keyboard. That's that's all they do. They get on the internet and they talk reckless and say all kind of grimy shit. And but but they pussies like straight up. You a pussy. Internet and shit. Internet pain and shit. Like how I feel about niggas. <laughs> Internet banging. <laughs> Facebook. That's no. That's the, like a, the latest fad with gang shit now. Like gang niggas is like Internet. niggas got like a whole line, like fifty niggas under them yeah. they never met. <laughs> all but set from the. That's all the new shit Internet. now. Like that. Bring shit. niggas home on Internet. But it's, it's it really happens. <laughs> like it, in my line, blood. This shit really happen nowadays. If you on the Internet telling a nigga what you gonna do, not only you a pussy, you a snitch too. Real, all that internet shit. Like, if you got a problem with a nigga, holla at a nigga in the street. All that Twitter banging and all you little niggas hitting my Twitter page with that bullshit, man. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. That shit is for the lames. That shit is for pussies and nerds. For real. Nobody takes you serious on Twitter. If you really on the streets, you ain't got no time to be on the internet. Yeah. Whacking out a set. Like you sitting at home hitting shift and capitalizing the B and then lowercase in the C 
and hitting alt and putting 411 and slash figuring out how to slash the C. Like, come on, like you, when you really should be you should doing killing, too much. you should be killing somebody and, and getting some getting some vagina from some female and bagging up your work and hitting the strip because you a gangster. So yeah, you know man. what I'm saying? So don't be inboxing me and DMing me on my Twitter about no gang stuff, you guys. You never see them niggas in the streets. You never see them niggas when they work. I'm gonna be honest, the real active niggas, the real, real active niggas don't have time to be on the computer. They out there on the streets getting their grind out. You see these packages like this? They out there in the street put, making the stuff that I need to put in the pack you know, to send y'all niggas back east, you know? Put a couple pounds of weed in there. No, this, I'm just kidding. This is my warehouse right here. We do merchandising, we do shirts, we do a lot of things. But the real niggas who are active, they're not on the computer. They're out there getting their hustle on, getting their grind on, uh, getting their funk on. I'm on the computer because I'm not active, okay? Not no gang banging shit, I'm still gangster. But I'm, I'm, I'm beyond that now. I'm making, I'm making these chits right now. But my active niggas, you won't find them on no MySpace, on no Twitter, at this, that, that I'll serve. Listen, man, I get motherfucking messages damn near every day from little niggas from around the country. Hey, what's up, bud? What's up, big homie? I'm trying to get down with the one, two, fives. I'm trying to get down with the homies on the twerk gang, man. And you know what I tell these little niggas? Sometimes I don't respond depending on the mood I'm in, right? But most of the time I tell these niggas, I say, yo, homie, you can't be serious, man. You can't possibly respect what you're doing. You shouldn't even be talking gang activities on the internet anyway. I go on the internet and I see shit that has no business online. I see some people that are really actual gang members, I'm not gonna call names, but I see that they put all of their neighborhood's business out, a lot of these young guys. You know, it's nothing wrong with being online. Everybody's on Facebook, shit, I'm on Facebook. But at the same time, you don't put shit on Facebook all about the hood and, you know, we having a meeting over here and all this extra bullshit to add the feds all of everybody's ass. Nigga. Do you know what a, a, a computer is, nigga? It's nothing to get all your information off the computer, short. A nigga can easily just type in your name and get your address. Ain't nothing wrong with using the internet and the computer for networking purposes, things of that nature. But out there recruiting niggas and bringing niggas home on a computer, man. You whack, dog. Like, you really whack as hell. And niggas damn sure don't get on the computer and send text messages or Twitter or whatever you niggas do on the computer to other niggas from other gangs. Speed dating, you know what I'm saying? Like, you you ain't get it from that hood, homie, then you ain't got it. It's as simple as that, you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna tell you how niggas supposed to network and meet niggas, but I get sick of niggas hitting my shit talking about how can I get down with your hood. Nigga ain't told me his name or nothing. You ain't never even been to my neighborhood, nigga, but you, you wanna get down with me. What? Niggas will put your ass in a box out here for that shit. Niggas don't computer bang my nigga. Y'all remember back in the day when, when Crip Walking first came out and motherfuckers was laughing like, oh, oh the Crip doing with Hollywood. Well, guess what? The Bloods is going Hollywood, my niggas. Y'all niggas is Hollywood, homie. I'm from Inglewood, y'all are Hollywood. Y'all gotta pay respect, y'all gotta pay homage. Y'all gotta do pay your dues, my nigga. Not just going to the gangster store and pay for some stripes. No, nah, homie, that, that, your stripes is counterfeit. I mean, it's like it's like for me it's like it works both ways on one hand I'm like it's kind of like a slap in the face cuz when I was doing my thing and if, if they heard a Damu or Suru on the song you know what I mean that was like oh my god you can't say that but yet and still Snoop and the other Crip rappers they get to say cuz or whatever and it's no big deal but when we say it it's like we said the most horrible thing ever so now and one token, I'm like, yeah, it's kind of good to see some, some niggas put it down for the card. But on the other hand, it's like, it kind of hurts to see a lot of fake ass niggas putting it down for the card. A lot of niggas that's like banging from mansions and banging from in the valley and shit like that, where they don't really have to put it on the front line. They never put it on the front line. And you know what I mean? They just doing it to sell records. It's like they just woke up one morning and said, yo, we gonna be blood. Niggas money for them in position. Straight up, if you, if you got receipts for your gang stripes, I'm not fucking with you. If you one of them just add water and mix instant gangsters, I'm not fucking with you. What's even sadder is that you got a lot of real niggas 
that's vouching for these fake niggas just for a paycheck. They doing it because there's nobody stopping them from doing it. There's no niggas from LA saying, y'all can't do that. Y'all ain't get put on out here. Y'all can't push that. So that money is talking. At the end of the day, I feel like if, if you're gonna do that, then you should at least be schooling these niggas correctly. If you tell the niggas what the do's and the don'ts, you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that. And there's a lot of reckless shit going on that a lot of these young rap niggas, they gonna see. They gonna see when they start running across the real. When they run across the real crips that ain't trying to hear that, 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 that I'm a rapper shit. That's when it's gonna go down. <laughs> The subculture of the Los Angeles gang member is one of the most misrepresented cultures that exist today. We are misrepresented in the movies. We are misrepresented in music. We're exploited by these industries and don't a dollar of this money go back into our communities. Now, one of the things about this is that if a rapper is out there and he's doing his thing and he's originally and from that neighborhood officially and he's to put his work in, then he has rights to this. Because of the fact that if you have rights to this, you have a right to tell your story. But you have no rights to this if you're just out here exploiting us. Because one of the things about all this that, has, that deals with us is the fact that, let's say, uh, greatest example in the world. We got a little white kid living in, uh, let's say, Des Moines, Iowa somewhere. He listened to one of these rappers that got a red bandana hanging out of his pocket. Now all of a sudden, he wants to go start a gang up, and he starts this gang up with these little, say, little white kids, whatever, right? Now nah, they running around with red bandanas, but they run into a real, a real gang, and they run into some crips, and they, run, they got blue bandanas. Now all of a sudden, the little white kid ends up getting killed or getting one of his friends killed in the midst of this. What happens is they blame the, the gang member, the real gang members for this. They don't blame the rapper that made the song. They look at the gang member who set the culture, who's living the life that has nothing to do with it. A lot of people are out there rapping and they advocate certain terms of negativity to the point where if they were really from those neighborhoods, then they wouldn't advocate that. You disrespecting blood and you ain't paying homage to none of the beat dog niggas that paved the way for y'all niggas. It, even though this is part of our lifestyle, this ain't something that we trying to glorify. You feel me? This is something that we trying to get out of and do something for our younger brothers and shit like that. How you can be blood and just run through the industry thinking you can do what you want and say what you want and don't got to answer to nobody. If you making money and you going back to your community and you helping your people and the blood thing, something's going on in your community no matter what city, state, or country will say where well, you may come from, and you going back and putting something in there, you know, you helping your people, giving them jobs, or doing anything to better the life, the life, the lifestyles of the people that come from your neighborhood, then I commend you for that. But for those that are just exploiting it, those just walking around, just acting like they bloods, those that are out there exploiting our lifestyle, then they have no rights to this. And in my opinion, if they're exploiting the lifestyle, they need to ask you every time that they come in contact with real blood. Niggas that got all this money that's gang banging now, niggas is wax. The rap game whack because the niggas like that, son. We need more niggas like. Psh, we need more niggas like my nigga Pop, man. Psh, I can't think of nobody else, really, but that's off the top of my head. All these other rappers, Rick Ross, and so 100 Keys in, in, in the last CD I listened to. You feel me? I know the fans listening. You feel me? These niggas is wax, son. That's just my opinion, man. Y'all got your own opinion, but. I'm doing this shit for my niggas in the hood that don't rap, but they see shit through a different point of view. Like if I had a camera, I'd be taking pictures. I would show y'all life like that. But I'm a rapper, so I break shit down with my words and try to show you the shit that we trying to come up out of. So for all them rappers that glorify gang banging, shooting niggas, all that stupid shit, man, go ahead, man. That's mm -hmm. what you got. Don't let these old funny Fugazi, Mark ass, target practice, bitch ass, studio banging ass rappers influence you to fuck your life off because they not contributing nothing to your life my nigga there's nothing nothing that they doing for you personally but you on the other hand you go buy their cds some of that money going in their pocket and they not real at all it's more than just wearing a flag or, or saying you a gang a lot of violence and danger come with this shit. You go into another nigga neighborhood, you know, you're a little young nigga, you all hype, you just seen a little Wayne video, you wanna wave your flags and the nigga bust your stupid ass. We just letting y'all know that these dudes ain't right. Don't follow these dudes, don't believe these dudes because they sell a million records. Don't make him the realest blood. No matter what he say, no matter how many Sue Wolves, no matter how many red flags he got in his video, he not realer than him, me, 
the man behind the camera, the producer, you know what I'm saying? He's not no realer, he just got more money. Rapper, they send you the studio, they can turn it off, they done recording, they go to their nice home, their nice wife, their nice children, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? They ain't got to worry about nobody running up on them. For me, it was everyday life. Like, paranoid. You gotta hold people accountable for what the fuck they say, what they do, they actions. You feel me? That's for the rappers and shit like that, you feel me? The niggas is talking about all of this stupid shit, killing this, killing that, doing this, doing that. As soon as the fans, as soon as that shit hits close to home, the families be crying. But they, they out there supporting that same message, you feel me? So if you ain't holding people accountable to what the fuck they saying, then you really ain't, you ain't part of no movement, you feel me? Like the, the industry is whack, son. It's being controlled by other people, and it's all gimmicks, son. Straight up, it's all gimmicks. It's it's not no real solid messages in this shit. Like it ain't that many solid messages in this shit. Like who puts you niggas on? I want to see some of the YouTube footage. I want to see some footage of niggas getting put on because niggas is, bu is buying their genius now. Now it seems like niggas don't even have to get put on no more. We had to we had to show knuckle game show that we wasn't gonna be afraid when it came time to have to have to collide with the enemy so these niggas is like niggas ain't getting put on no more it's too many niggas that out there saying that's doing rap videos and shit saying they banging and i don't see enough black eyes in videos so niggas ain't getting put on now how do i feel about rappers who are who are members of gangs i feel positive as long as they're not doing nothing negative if they are bringing homies from the hood, from that street life, into the industry life, I'm all for it. But if all they're doing is spitting, spitting garbage to get people riled up to go out there and kill each other, I'm against it. And I'm the worst enemy. Man, a lot done changed since, um... Coach's first season, you know what I'm saying, that cold red, like, you know what I'm saying, we got, I got a lot going on right now, um, since then, man, that first book come out, you know what I'm saying, that shit done did his numbers, you know what I'm saying, like, a lot of niggas respecting that, you know what I'm saying, getting motivated off that, but since then, I'm working on my second get out, man, um, shit called, um, Not At Their Expense, you know what I'm saying, I ain't really gonna get into too much of what that's about, it's just, you know what I'm saying, this shit I've been through, shit, in the last, um, six years, you know what I'm saying? So I've been fortunate just from the first one, man, to be, you know what I'm saying, traveling. So I'll be all over the country, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'll be all over, like, you know, like trying to. My, my interest lies in the youngsters nowadays. I mean, you know, I'm just, still fuck with the homies. Like, that's all cool. But I do got an invested interest in those that's coming up that, you know what I'm saying, they just getting started, man. Like, really trying to set the foundation, like, proper form. Because we losing our lives to the grave and to prison too much, man. I'm tired of this shit, my nigga. So, you know what I'm saying, this second book really is more so about um, like evolution, you know what I'm saying, about change, like transition. You know what I'm saying, my transition. You know what I'm saying, a lot of niggas out here just don't know, they don't know how to do that shit. They don't know what the fuck that even mean. What, what changed me? Like, what else, what else is there than this? You know what I'm saying? So I really try to detail in this next one for myself. I only speak for me, Jawi. I only speak for me, like what I've been through and how I got through it. You know what I'm saying? I try to detail that in the second book. You know what I'm saying? At least try to lay a foundation down for those that might be stuck, you know what I'm saying? Trapped like I was, man, when I was young. Um, hopefully that shit motivation, you know what I'm saying? Maybe she's inspiring to a little youngster out here, man, that want to do something with himself, man, but you know what I'm saying? He just don't know how, you know what I'm saying? So that's that's my next get out with the um, I got some new shit that I'm working on right now with the um, boy Forrest Whitaker, man. You know what I'm saying? He was an executive producer. An executive producer on the first, um, First and second season of Brick City. Um, he directed this new joint that I'm in. It's with me and um, the boy um, Ishmael Bay. You know what I'm saying? A brother from Sierra Leone. He, uh, um, he wrote a book called A Long Way Gone. Um, you know what I'm saying? He was a child soldier, you know what I'm saying? Recruited into the, um, you know into the camps, you know what I'm saying? At a young age. So me and him got this documentary called Soldiers of Peace. That on um, Forrest Whitaker directing right now. Pretty much it's me and a homie, you know what I'm saying? We pretty, we're gonna be traveling like this the world, man, like not even the country. So we're gonna be traveling a little bit, meeting different um, world uh, peace leaders and you know, 
groups and activists from throughout the country, not upon self, throughout the world. That's on, you know what I'm saying, um, interacting with them on their methods and, you know what I'm saying, tactic, tac uh, techniques on, just, you know what I'm saying, achieving peace in the street, man, because what work in this city may not work in that city. You know what I'm saying? So this shit is all about, you know what I'm saying, ciphering information. You know what I'm, I'm going to do what I do on a regular, man. I'm going to go out here and try to, you know what I'm saying, lay something down for these, this next generation, man. Hopefully, hopefully somebody, you know what I'm saying, can learn something from it. You know what I'm saying? Even though we just shot part one a few years ago, like, my life has dramatically changed. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's become so severe that, you know, my, my best friend was kidnapped and killed. murdered him wasn't even from a rival crip gang they were bloods we all supposed to be bloods but it's just bloods killing bloods you know what i'm saying and like it's it's hitting home even with my little brother my younger brother my younger brother is from paru he got into an altercation with some other dudes from bloods and it didn't turn out good now he got like 30 years in jail, you know what I'm saying? So, like, all situations like that are making me realize that this is really not the life that you want to take on. You think it is because it sounds good, you think it is because it look good, but in all actuality, it's not. Like, you're going to lose. It's, it's, like, I, I heard somebody say one time, there's no winning in this, it's just different degrees of losing. That's what it is. Like, there is no come up situations. You know what I'm saying? Being from Bloods, you're not going to become rich being from Bloods and be able to glorify it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's one situation going on right now where a homie from the set, you know, a couple of young homies from the set was, you know, just being anxious and thirsty to be down with the set to want to go and harm somebody because they feel that they want to put in work and they want to be active and they want to be noticed. And they went and committed a, a murder. And when it's time for them to be judged for that murder by the court system, because they don't understand the full concept behind being from a gang and doing what they did, the first thing they say is, the big homie told me to do it. My nigga Rum asked me this shit a while ago. This question came from this. He, he called me, he said, yo. He was like, yo, Jawi, let me ask you a question and shit. He was like, um, oh, I don't you know what I'm saying, niggas, and, you know, niggas is pushing the line and shit, going hard, right? They're banging for the turf, not letting nobody come through disrespecting, you know what I'm saying, being reckless, right? I said, hell yeah, you know, hell yeah. He said, so when niggas do that, who do they leave behind to protect your women? He said, who do they leave behind to protect their children, their mamas, and their wives? I had gave him so much in answering this question. I said, who, who holding the hood down? I said, my gunners holding the hood down. My shooters, my YGs, homie, the niggas. When I say get them, he say got them. Yeah, because I, I was so... When the nigga Rum asked me that shit, I was so... Cause I felt like he was challenging me when he asked me that shit. It was almost like you. It was almost like this. This paraphrasing. But he was like, "You a man, right? Fuck you, a man." I'm like, "Fuck it." I'm like, "What?" He like, "So when you in your hood, nigga, who holds your hood down?" Like he, he gassed me into the question. <laughs> so I went in on this shit. Like yeah. what? So I, and now I'm a proud on the line yeah, and shit. Yeah. I'm like, what? I'm thinking of all my little homies and shit. I'm just thinking of names. Like, come through my hood. You'll see. They'll show you better than we could tell you. So I'm. I'm but I'm telling them it's all over the phone. My homies, woo woo turf gang and shit, woo woo woo. You know what I'm saying? I'm giving it to him. So this nigga done let me spill the beans on him, right? Then he was like, well, why? The homie was like, so after all that's done and you kept your G, you in a bullpen, you meeting all your niggas, yeah, what's up, blood? And y'all niggas keeping it gangster. Who protecting your woman? Who protecting your wife, your child, and your mother? And man, I'm telling you, bro. That shit fucked me up. Because when he said it, it was real though. Like, like at that, when he said that, I knew he, he like kind of like, kind of urged me into going the way I went just to hit me with that shit. And I'm like, damn, like, I done been in jail. That's a good question. I done been in the county, I done been out of state prison. 
all this time when I'm in the jails and shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm holding the turf down, you know what I'm saying? Like, niggas don't know who the fuck I am. But at the same time, like, who holding down the people I left behind and shit? I really ain't had no real answer for it. I ain't gonna lie, I'm, I'm a grown ass man. I'ma tell you, bro, I told that nigga shit, son. He'll tell you blood up on bloods. Nigga tell you, I said, yo, I'ma get back to you with that shit. Cause I ain't the type of nigga that just gonna talk cause you right in front of my face. I tell you two second status, homie. I'ma holler at you later about that. I ain't gonna just run my mouth because you in front of me, and I was like, damn, I said, I'm gonna get back to you on that shit, funk. I don't know, I ain't gonna see a lot of you. That shit was a couple days, you know what I'm saying? Three, four, five days, something like that. But I hit blood back, man. I told that nigga, I said, man, you right. There was no rebuttal to the question. No one's protecting them. Yo ass in a bullpen, you in a county, you in a green monster. You in wreck, you in a yard. And they home alone, defenseless. That shit fucked me up, son. And when he said it, man, I mean, that's, that's real shit, man. Like, that's, those are the type of questions and situations that I think older homies need to really present to these youngsters out here. Because a lot of times we don't force these little niggas to think, man. I mean, I'm gonna be real with you, man. No matter if you gang banging or you in college and you a scholar, you still need to use your mind. Because you could be the hardest nigga on the street, but you could be dumb, get your noodles knocked. So even to be in the street, right, out here banging and shit, you still gotta have some type of intellect to how the streets go down. You know what I'm saying? And when he said this shit, that shit like that shit twisted me up, man. I'm like, he right though, like, cause I. And when he said it, all I thought back was all the time that I was in jail, or when I was in prison. And I'm thinking like all them nights when I'm up, you know what I'm saying, making hookups and shit, and you know what I'm saying? I'm wondering like, you know, it's making me think what the people you left behind, what they going through. That shit not right. That shit not right. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think nowadays, I mean, you're going to have to love your hood. You know what I mean? That's especially that's where you're from. But man, for you young you know, homies out there that got them babies, right? Shit, man. They got to be priority, man. I mean, I don't know no other way to tell you, man, because I got four of them. Three girls and a little son, a little soldier. And shit, I love my funkies to death. But if, I mean, they come first, man. You know what I'm saying? Now, I feel personally, if you're handling your business, it never comes to a point where you gotta choose. You know what I'm saying? That's just me, though. But you can't neglect one and pay homage to the other. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you know what I'm saying? You gotta handle your business. So I think, you know what I'm saying? Niggas need to really spend more time with these kids because we. We birthing a nation of fucking idiots, dog. I be hearing these little niggas, the shit they be saying to me, man. And they be the most idiotic shit in the world. Real talk, man. Like, I be like, damn, blood. You just said that? So my interest is in these youngsters, man. You know what I'm saying? My children and my little homies, man. Like, I mean, I'm still going to turf. I'm still sagging. Drinking my little whatever. You know what I'm that's, but that's his life though. That's gonna happen. That's inevitable. Everybody gonna do that. But as far as like, you know what I'm saying, stealing something in them, cause I could, shit, I could die today, man. They gonna remember me, though. Know? They gonna remember me. Something that I, you know what I'm saying, try to teach them niggas. That's, you know what I'm saying, conducive to their lifestyle, man. So, you know what I'm saying? I just think we need to really, you know what I'm saying, spend more time with these, these, with our kids, man. Stop making these babies and being suckers, dog. Making all these kids being straight up suckers. Because then you lead them for the hood to raise them, get turned out, go to jail for life. That's it. That's like a fucked up cycle we got going on out here. Not solid over here, homie. So, you know what I mean? You got, in the, you got a couple of niggas out here that's really... Because you're going to have those that's going to always feed into that train of thought. That ain't going to change. But then you got a few niggas that's going to step up, you know what I'm saying, try to fight that shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I, I'm glad to be one of them niggas, man. Because um, I want one of my homies to be... 30, 40 years old and be like, yeah, shit, my big homie said this, that, and the third 20 years ago. Shit changed my life, blood.
now Which came first, huh? The gangster or the man? Once you understand that concept, maybe you'll figure out that plan We fighting in a war for a land that's not even ours And don't get it twisted, even a soldier can be a coward Call the arms, but a plea for common sense Banging this tribal by nature, yeah, track those footprints Events were set in motion, racial motivated murders The Panthers have manifested a knowledge and action merger The government hushed that roar down to a murmur Labeled us subhuman and J. Edgar Hoover was a pervert Ember spark drifting ignition is now imminent Dormant milling to minds are now awakened a mimicking Lifetown sentencing, third eye omnipotent The old heads knowing the truth and the difference We slipping in the darkness when we shifting in the offense Man up, it's enough of this nonsense, yeah Travel, but the story gets altered. Seasons change, and false truths wither and falter. I repeat, halt, cease fire. I know the streets tired. Take all of the beef and put it in a deep fryer. Cultures are created through living environments. Poverty bred violence. Snitching instead of silence. See, is evidence evidently labeled as insubmissive.